We're going to be doing the rear diffuser next because if you look, there's a big empty space. And aesthetically, I don't really like how that looks. I would much rather have a, a diffuser out the back plus it should give me some functional level of performance. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna give you the basic idea of how I'm doing this. And I'm by no means a professional. It's the first time I'm doing this, but I have a good idea. And we're just gonna run with it and see what happens. So stick around. All right, so looking at this, we have kind of three main points. We have the actual area that's been cut out. That's the trunk kind of position. We have the back corner of the fuel cell support bracket and then we have the rear axle so I don't want it to interfere with the axle it needs to clear this and I want it to come close to this so what we're gonna do is make a little chart this is gonna be the trunk here this will be the fuel cell support and then this will be the axle is gonna be basically like right here granted it's much bigger than that but this is where it's going to be kind of the starting point of where the diffuser goes and then we're just going to kind of mark it out and draw a smooth arc and then I'll put it on the mold that we're going to use and then that should give me the arc to go through and then we'll lay carbon on it. Alright, so we have our basically our three data points. Six inches is also corresponding with zero inches deep. Eleven and a half inches deep corresponds to 13 inches off the ground, and 21 inches off the ground is 26 inches deep. These three points should give me a curve that is about the right height off the ground to clear the, um, the rear axle. This will clear the fuel cell brackets. And this should get right up behind where the uh, the cutout is on the car. Winnie, do you? What are you doing? Hey, you gonna help me? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, I uh, here. I'll just show you. So this is our six inch mark, which should be right on this edge. Um, that's our 13 and 11 and a half over from this edge. And then that's our 21 and 26 inches because it's 26 inches from there to there. As you can see, I was expecting this dot to be kind of down here so that it would have a kind of a natural slope to it. Because curved diffusers typically work better than single plane diffusers. Um, so that just means we have extra clearance that I wasn't really expecting for. So I can basically take this point and freehand an arc that I want to that point. So I have these two cut. This one's a little bit longer just because I forgot about it on this one. I just want a little bit extra that I can then cut off if I need to. And then I'm gonna put some pieces of it right on the back. I'll probably just glue those on or something just to make them stay there. But now the trick that's gonna make this all work is basically this is a mold, not a mold. It's, it's a profile, right? So we have two of these and I found this thing for sale and it's basically just a bunch of foam slats connected by fabric. So I'm going to take that, put it on here, and it should take the shape of the curve. And then once we take the shape of the curve, then we put plastic wrap on it and lay carbon right on the plastic wrap because that's the cheapest way to do things. And we're not vacuum bagging this, so that's just going to do what it needs to do. So after a fair amount of finagling and more and more tennis balls playing um this is where we're at so this is that roll of fabric and foam that i had initially found and i added my little backers on here just to give me a good 
good place to hold it. And if you look, it follows the curve really, really well on both sides. There's a little bit of gap right over there, but at this point, I'm banking on this being very uniform side to side and help evening out any any undulations and yeah it's not gonna be perfect but this is this is in the budget so I also realized that I put it on my glass table which I usually prep all of my carbon on so I think I might have to lay the carbon out on this table literally put resin everything on it on the plastic sheet and then take the sheet from here and put it over here because that is big and it's very difficult to work around so that's that's the next step and after that the width of this side to side is bigger than the, the width that I need so I won't have to do any pieces it'll just be single piece and then I'll just have to make some side flat side profiles and honestly I already have the template for it because it's just gonna be that so that's that's the next step this is not what you would do in a production environment. This is my basement and I have limited time and money. So we make it work. And I've used this technique multiple times on both the dash that I built, the trunk, and a few other pieces where I want to make multiple things, but I don't want to prep them or have a solid surface and wax and all that stuff. Plastic drop cloth works just fine. It's non-porous, epoxy doesn't stick to it, it peels right off and stick around and you'll see that it happens. So I can't prep carbon there, so I'm gonna do it here. And yes, this is a gel coated table, but I don't feel like waxing it and cleaning the resin off, so I'm just gonna do it on this and then throw it away. So we're gonna prep the carbon pieces here and put them up there. All right, so we got half the layers on. I'm gonna do two, obviously one layer like that, one layer like that, they overlap in the middle. And then I have two more pieces that are gonna go on the edges and go this way. So it just kind of makes a big rectangle that all overlaps. Um, I'm putting an extra on the side because that's probably where I'm gonna mount it. But I need to get to that before the resin cures and I'll show you it once it's done. All right, so there it is. Um, yes, I know none of the lines are straight. If you've worked with carbon you know how incredibly hard it is to keep straight lines that's why you cut straight lines after it's secured so now we just wait for this to cure it'll take a couple days to fully fully cure um, it's cold outside in Michigan so it takes a little bit longer to cure but once that's cured we'll pop it off um, just kind of give it a good look see and then we'll work on making the actual kind of like end plates that will go beneath the diffuser and closer to the ground to give it a kind of a flat bottom. If you know what a diffuser looks like, you know what I'm talking about. So we'll make a couple of those. I might make three and have one in the middle or even four and have it equally spaced, but we'll see. So now I just need to wait for this to cure. All right, so here we are a day later and everything is pretty much cured. Again, you don't really get the edges very good, but it all has that kind of door knocking feel so now we get to pull this off and see how it actually looks all right so we got our template our four individual vertical styles that are going to go in the diffuser i got a bunch of 90 degree brackets that i 3d printed when i was testing out my printer so i figured that those would be a rainy date part and they are and that's it let's get to it all right so here's our radius diffuser kind of floor i don't really know the technical term for it but it's the piece that is under the car um if you can look and see it has a bit of torsional flex right now but that's okay uh i have the stanchions no stakes whatever they're called that go vertically under here to give it kind of better trapping of air and more rigidity i have that and those cut out, you know, go grab those. All right, so we got four of these, uh, four is more, and that's how we're gonna do it. Um, it just seemed like the right number of these for the size of this. Um, so yeah, we just gotta mount these. I got a bunch of little 90 degree 3D printed brackets. 
I'm gonna run with those and hopefully they're stiff enough. If not, I might kind of tape the seams with carbon, but we'll see. So let's get to that. All right, so after trimming everything and getting straight cuts all around and just kind of tossing it under, that's where we're at. Um, I'm like equal parts happy and unhappy just with how it came out. Um, the overall function's good, but as you can see, like over here we have some gaps just because I think as the, as the ramp cured a little bit more, the bend kind of changed a little bit. Um, as far as I know, it's not really going to affect anything because the main thing that the diffuser does is all have to do with that radius ramp or in some applications it's straight. So it doesn't really affect anything as far as I know. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to change anything, but as you can see, it goes way under the car and it's actually almost going too far. It's almost hitting the brake calipers on the rear wheels, but so yeah. Now I just need to figure out how to mount this thing and it's gonna take me a little bit to figure that out, but that's where we're at. Now after a long winded discussion between myself and me, um, I decided to go with the method of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And currently that isn't broke. It's just not as good as I want to. So pushing on, um, we're gonna mount it with some spherical joints and these push button mounts. Um, 
if you notice they're all over my car anyways so what's a couple more so let's get after it All right, so there we have it. That is the radius carbon diffuser mounted. Uh, we got our push button mounts there and there that connect through to the mounting brackets and that. Where those go through is actually where the body seam of this panel and then the underside trunk panel come together. So it's actually very rigid. And then we have our threaded mounts that go from spherical joints all the way to a center mounting point. And then we also have a center mounting point on the diffuser that's actually zip tied up to the same mounting point. So when I pull that up, it puts everything else in tension and keeps the center from drooping. Uh, because everything is mounted to a central pivot point on the front, the, the actual front edge of the diffuser can do kind of a, a weeble wobble motion just in case there's any debris that it comes into contact with. So it shouldn't just take out the entire diffuser if it hits anything. So. All right, well, if you like this sort of content where perfection isn't everything and things can go wrong and that's okay because you're doing it yourself, make sure to check out my other videos, especially on the carbon wing that I made. Again, it's not perfect, but it's gonna do a majority of what it's supposed to do for a fraction of the cost. So if that's your style of videos, make sure to subscribe, check out the other videos and stick around for the next one.